Welcome to Chalk Talk, a weekly preview of West Tennessee football featuring the Jackson Sun sports team here on jacksonsun.com. Hi everybody, welcome to the season two of Chalk Talk here at jacksonsun.com. My name is Craig Thomas, this is the sports editor and high school football editor here at the uh, Sun, Jack, uh, Brandon Shield. Got a lot of good games uh, to look forward to this week, not only in Jackson, but also throughout West Tennessee. We'll focus here on some of the good t uh, games involving some Jackson teams, and one that really jumps out, Henry County at Liberty. That one jumps out so much that I've already decided that's one where I'm going. I think I decided that like three months ago. Uh, but Henry County's the defending 5A champion. Liberty has come down with some pretty high expectations, um, and they're going to get tested early on against this good team that won the 5A state championship last year. Uh, but you know, one negative to this game is that Liberty has a habit of coming in with high expectations because they have athletes all over the field and they usually have some big linemen. But early in the season, they usually take some losses because Hook Finn, uh, their head coach Steve Hook Finn, usually schedules uh, some some tough games early on. Well, um, last week at their uh, at their scrimmage in the Sports Plus Jamboree at Northside, Liberty showed first of all they got the run game. They've had one ever since. Liberty started having a football and they've had a good run game. They've got they've got a passing game to balance it out to keep the defenses honest. And, and uh, on top of that, they got a good defense too, or at least all these were looking good last week mm -hmm. against Dyer County. So now the question is, okay, they're all good. How good are they? Well, Henry County is when we find out exactly how good they are. Um, and uh, I think once you get Corey Newbel out there, uh, throwing to the receivers like Agent White and, and uh, a couple other guys. You got Devin Bush running against um, guys from Henry County got, with the speed and the size that Henry County is known to have. Seeing how they do in that situation, we'll, we'll have a better idea of exactly how good Liberty is. And you play the 5A state champion, you get a pretty true picture, I guess. I would hope so, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, another game to look forward to, Trinity Christian, a team that got to the state semifinals last year, has a lot of people back, a lot of high expectations. They'll travel to St. George's. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know a lot about St. George's. I know uh, I talked to a couple of TCA fans last week that have been scouting them or, or looking into them or whatever. St. George's apparently lost a lot off the team that made it to Cookville last year. Uh, but, I mean, they got some good coaches there. They know what to do with the personnel, and they know uh, they're good enough to uh, tailor their game plan around the, the personnel they have. Uh, in fact, in one year, they did that against USJ in week eight. Uh, and uh, they had one game plan, which was mainly throw the ball, throw the ball, throw throw the ball. Well, by week 15, when they met in the state championship, their game plan had totally changed to running the ball, and and uh, 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 they they were able to beat Liberty wins or USJ <laughs> win the state championship. Uh, but you know, last year was a high scoring game. TCA won in overtime, 41 to 38. I'm kind of looking for that again, with one asterisk to that statement. TCA hired a defensive coordinator this year, a guy who actually knows defense um, and it has uh, been taught in it, whereas it's not just some offensive coaches trying to teach defense. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, last year, TCA, they were trying to play defense, but the philosophy was more of, okay, we're going to stop them if we can, but if we don't, we're just going to try to outscore them. Well, this year, they're actually going to try to keep opposing offenses from scoring that much. And if they can do that, and then you still got Kyle Lakin back there handing it off to Andrew Goldsmith or James Bond or throwing it to Eli Parker or Ryan Smith um, uh, or uh, uh, Grant Revere, um, then that can, that can lead to some big wins for TCA. And we'll see if that happens as the year goes on. One game between City Schools, South Sides at USJ, what do you expect to happen? Uh, well, this is, this is another one we're just going to find out a lot about both teams. Um, South Side didn't look that great. Last week in the Jamboree at Northside, um, they had a hard time moving the ball consistently, converting on first downs, uh, so they got shut out by, by Jackson Christian. Um, USJ, I'm kind of going into the season kind of wondering about their pass offense because they lost their, their two or three best receivers, particularly Austin Orr and Cody Kilburn. And um, they, uh, they look good. Uh, last week, uh, Eastern Underwood, was hitting some guys for some good passes, and the passes that even weren't caught, they were still looking good. Um, uh, but Jonathan Atkins, he's a senior that's never played football before. Uh, he, he's a basketball player. Uh, he has some good catches. He, he could be one that, that helps him out this year. Um, also, one guy that didn't play last week, Mitchell Bodford, he was our sophomore of the year last year with about 1,400 yards uh, as a running back. Um, 
uh, that would just be an added dimension to the USJ offense. I, that should help them out. Northside's had a real good team a couple years ago. They were competitive again last year, but a lot of uh, changed playmakers. What do you expect will happen when they go to Dyer County? Well, um, Northside looked really good against TCA in the Jamboree. Um, uh, their their quarterback Tylen Shaw he looked he looked good uh, every time I've seen him he he's looked good and and the uh, and the receivers were, were catching the balls that he were throwing and his, his balls were were good passes thrown and his uh, and, and the guys were there to catch and making making good catches um, a lot of fans because they saw Dyer County get smoked by Liberty uh, earlier in the um, Jamboree there there's a lot of people that's thinking we'll just go down there and smoke them. Uh, like Liberty did, and then we'll come home and we'll get ready for Hardin County. Don't look, I, I, I don't know if I trust that kind of thinking just yet because we don't know exactly what all Dyer County was trying to accomplish that night. If all they were trying to accomplish was get a paycheck and get out of there without getting injured, then they weren't showing anything and they're going to get smoked by Liberty 21 to nothing. And then all of a sudden they could come out and, and surprise Northside. So Indians fans, go over there. Go over there with optimism because you do have a good team, but I would go there with uh, uh, what Riverside coach Jeff Robertson called a couple weeks ago in the paper, cautious optimism. Uh, just uh, be ready if Dyer County comes out looking better than what they did this week. One team in the city that has had some, some notable improvement long term but hasn't quite knock down the fence, I guess, uh, to, to contention is the Jackson Central Mary Cougars. They've, they've gotten better, but they've still got a little ways to go. The host of Good Dyersburg team, uh, what do you expect in that game? Well, you were there last year when JCM scored a lot of points at Dyersburg, but the problem was they gave up a lot more. Yeah, Dyersburg just scored a lot more points. 51-28 to 28 was that final. Um, this year, JCM's coming in with a lot of motivation. Uh, Terrence Kenny, their quarterback, he didn't get to play last year, so he's just kind of itching to get out uh, on the football field and, and, and do well in an actual game. Um, uh, Bubba Sterling was a young man who died in the house fire back in February. Wednesday's paper, we had a story about um, uh, the uh, the team kind of uh, dedicating the season to his memory and wanting to win for him. So they got that, and if nothing else, they just want to win and be successful for themselves and for their school, and to show them that. To show everybody who touts JCM that, yeah, you know, we, we got we got some positive stuff going on here. Um, I don't know if all that will translate to a win over Dyersburg. Dyersburg was really good last year. They lost some off of last year's team, but they're still going to be pretty good. Um, so, you know, the only thing they got going for them, or the main thing they got going for them, is they're playing at home. They're they're in some familiar surroundings. How much that helps, we'll find out Friday. Jackson Christian, a new coach this year, they will take on FACS in week zero. What are you looking for for that game? Jackson Christian, um, when, when, when Todd Rowland, their, their head coach, came in uh, and he saw a game film from last year, he the main thing he took away from that was um, that their offense was good, their defense was what needed to work. Because uh, most of the time they were getting outscored by everybody. Um, well, last week, uh, their offense looked like it needed some work here and there. Now, like with Dyer County, we don't know what all they were trying to accomplish. We don't know how much of a playbook they opened last week. But um, if that defense, which has been the point of emphasis all offseason, does uh, improve to the point that it keeps the team in games late into the game, late in the fourth quarter where you're only down a possession or two, we could see Jackson Christian win some games that, that, that they haven't been winning in the last couple of years. Last year, um, uh, FACS hosted Jackson Christian and they beat uh, the Eagles, uh, I think, 29 to three, and they went on to win to win their first seven or eight games. This game could be a momentum builder. Uh, I think Jackson Christian's in a tougher district than FACS, uh, so not sure if it would lead to seven or eight wins, um, but um, but it could lead to a big year if they were to build some momentum off this game. All right, lots of good games involving city teams. There'll be games at Liberty, at USJ, at JCM, which will be at Lane Field uh, in the city, and then at Jackson Christian. Obviously, some city teams on the road. Regardless of where you go Friday night, though, make sure Friday morning you read this. This is the kickoff football tab. It's a lot of work's gone into this throughout the summer, talking with all 32 teams in our coverage area. We've got rosters of all those teams, uh, kind of a look back at what they did last year, and then a look ahead to what they might do this year. We've got a lot of district look and uh, I know you guys have put a lot of work into that so a lot of good insight from coaches and players so that's definitely something you want to check out other than that we hope you enjoy uh, week zero and uh, we look forward to bringing you some more high school football coverage 
throughout the year. And also, I mean, check us out on Facebook, Jackson Sun Sports on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter at JS Editor Brandon. He's JS Writer Craig, uh, JS Writer Michael, and JS Generals B Josh. That or JS Generals Josh. I think I take care of everybody in the uh, uh, sports department. Uh, so we'll have constant score updates on Friday nights from the games that we're at, plus games uh, that we have somebody covering. All right, sounds good.